Hi friends, welcome back to Imogen Xstitch. My name is Imogen, my pronouns are they, them. I'm also Imogen Xstitch over on Instagram. This is a channel about cross stitch. I also read tarot cards, so I do have a lot to talk to you about today. But first, let's see what my tarot cards have to say to you as a collective community. I am still, well, we're always learning tarot. You're never finished learning tarot. I feel like I'm still learning tarot, so I do appreciate um, feedback or questions about this in particular. Um, all right, so I pulled the Eight of Wands. This is one of the only cards in the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck that does not show any people. Um, it shows movement um, and wands are the suit of passion so things like art maybe you're stitching maybe um, spirituality things that you're passionate about and this is showing like a flurry of inspiration maybe it's also sometimes associated with travel i did pull it upright so if you are traveling maybe this is a good omen although during covid it's hard for me to say that, but um, yeah, this is a flurry of passionate ideas um, we're, we're creating. Um, what just came up for me is we're also creating community here in the midst of a lot of passion and inspiration and finding people that share those things with us is important for us right now. So that's what my tarot deck has to say. Um, let me know if it resonates. I don't know what came over me. Um, it has been a while. So I do have whips works in progress to show you. Um, I have a finish and then I have 11 fully finished objects. <laughs> I don't fully finish things people <laughs> ever. Um, but I was watching Helen, the Diddy stitcher and, um, she, I don't know how she does it, but she finishes things and she FFOs them like immediately. <laughs> And I'm, my brain just can't comprehend that. I'm so impressed. I'm in awe. Um, and she does show the backs of her finishes. And she always says that they're janky. But I find that really inspiring because I realize one of the things that prevents me from FFOing things is I don't know how to do it right. I feel like I don't know how to do it perfectly. Like I know how to cross stitch and my cross stitch is on point. Right? And I don't want to ruin it by messing up the fully finishing. I feel like a lot of people can probably relate to that. But so I saw Helen do a finish that she said was janky. It was like taped across the back and whatever. And then I watched Michelle Bendy Stitchy's um, Twitch streams where she was doing her journal finishes and has, um, <laughs> you know, she said that the hardest part is um, gluing and just like, coming to a place where you're okay with gluing things and <laughs> you're okay with letting go of the perfectionism and, and all of that. Um, and I don't know, I was really inspired by those two things all at once. And I went to Joanne's and they had, um, frames and stuff on clearance. So I found this shadow box, um, which here, I'll grab it. Oh, <laughs> Oh no, look at Patrick on his head up there. I can't, that cannot stand. I guess if you don't know, if you haven't noticed him up there before, this is Patrick Stump, um, who is the lead singer of Fall Out Boy, which is my favorite band. Okay, so on clearance at Joann's, I got this shadow box, which is gonna be super <laughs> glary because it is glass in the front. Um, so it's, it's fairly, you know, wide, it's chunky. It's a shadow box. This is 12 by 12. And so then it opens up and then like, basically this is just a bulletin board in a box. So there's some like burlap fabric, um, in the back here. And I literally just pinned these things in here. Um, and I can, like, I, I didn't, I cut a little bit of the excess fabric, but honestly, like not enough. It's just like this will, <laughs> I didn't even pin this one all the way in. Like these things are just pinned in, but now I can see them. And like, 
looking at Hildy at the apothecary all the time instead of <laughs> enjoying looking at my keyboard. Um, like these things were just sitting in a box, right? I finished them, I spent all this time on them, I love them, and I put them in a box because I don't know how to finish them. I still don't know how I want to permanently finish these, but that's what I love about this shadow box. I can undo this at any time. Like I, I sort of am undoing it unintentionally right here, but um, unfortunately my floss tube is so new that you haven't even seen these things, and now I'm like overwhelmed with the amount of things I have to talk about with these. <laughs> so that's part of why this video is a week late. I'm just overwhelmed with the amount of things that I want to say, and then I say nothing. So we're just being messy, just <laughs> hang out, please. Um, okay. So starting with, with this guy, this is actually a freebie from Night Spirit Studio called One More, Just One More Page. Um, it does, as charted, it does say that text, Just One More Page, and then there's another bookshelf. You can't see my hand. Um, yeah, so it says Just One More Page, and then there's another bookshelf below. Um, I liked it just like this. So, and this is actually stitched... I was going to say it's as called for, but I don't think it is. I think it's all uncalled for flosses, like normal, for me. Um, the skeleton guy, he is in Etoile, so he is a little bit sparkly in person. But I really like that chart. It was fun. That was one of my travel projects. I stitched most of that frame sitting in a cemetery, actually, <laughs> because that's what I do. Um, this one is Hildy at the Apothecary by Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Bendy Stitchy Designs. Um, I did not stitch this as charted either. Totally uncalled for. Um, I <laughs> This apothecary cabinet is not charted as full coverage the way that I did it. It's charted as the outline, which is still great, but I'm, I was feeling extra, so I filled in the entire cabinet, which added a whole lot of stitching to this small chart. Um, put a, I put a little hat on this black cat. Um, the border is actually a DMC variegated thread. What else do I have to say about this? Oh, Hildy. <laughs> She's punk rock Hildy in my version. Um, I'm just, I'm in love with her little chain, um, belt. Her little off the shoulder <laughs> top, little boots. Um, and Punk Rock Hildy actually was Michelle's idea. I don't remember, maybe it was a Quaker Zoom we were on, and she said that she hopes that one day I make Hildy goth. Um, <laughs> so, like, obviously, if the designer says that, I'm going to do it. Um, and I, I love how she turned out. Um, these two are Mill Hill kits, so they're, they're mostly beads. Um... Those are from the Autumn Harvest collection. I don't remember the exact names of those charts, but you can still get those. And then, um, let's see, let's go to this full coverage guy. So this one, you can't still, you can't buy it. Oh my gosh, this is why I insert pictures and I'm just, I, I can't be bothered today. So bear with me. Um, this is a Haid. Heaven and Earth design. You can't still buy it in this format. Actually, you could never buy it in this format. Um, I got this during the 2000, 2012 or 2013 um, stitch along on the Heaven and Earth Designs bulletin board when they did that. I don't know if they still do this, but um, the way this worked was there were seven-ish charts that were that they um, put out that were this size, and this is. I want to say it's only like one full page of a Hade chart and then three partial pages, I think. And they really, they gave you each release um, quarterly. So for me, I had never done a Heaven and Earth design before. And before I committed to something that was going to take me years, I wanted to see how I felt about their delivery truck. <laughs> So 
the way this worked in 2012 was on the Heaven and Earth Design bulletin board, which probably still exists, I don't know. Um, you signed up for the stitch along and you chose one of maybe seven charts and they were small charts like this, which I think is one full page and three partial pages. And you got one page per quarter to do on your one of these seven to join your one chart. And then by the end of the year, if you finished your piece um, by a certain date and emailed them a picture of it, you they sent you the other seven charts. Um, so that's what I did. I didn't stitch any of the other seven charts. I, I did this one in the time and I got them all, but I never stitched them. Um, but this one was my favorite. So you can't buy it in this format. This is an excerpt from a larger pattern though that you can buy. Um, and now I have to remember what it's called, Theater of the Absurd. Um, so the original artwork here is by Cairo Marchetti. If I'm butchering that name, I apologize. He's one of my favorite artists on the Heaven and Earth Design site. I don't know if I'm ever gonna stitch a full size chart of his. They're so intricate. I love this one. Um, oh, sorry. And so the reason that I did this was I had never stitched a Heaven and Earth Design chart before, and I didn't want to commit to something that was going to take me literally years um, before I knew whether I liked, you know, the way that they charted or the symbols that they use or, or anything like that. So this was a really good test run. Um, yeah, and I really enjoyed that. Um, this is on a purple fabric. I don't know what it is. Sorry. Oh, and this purple fabric is um, lavender mist. It's a fibrilicious yummy fibers um, fabric of the month. I want to say it's lavender, lavender something. Um, and I know that purple doesn't really show up on camera. There's lovely sort of gray um, in that. And then this one is a picture of this plus. I want to say ancient, but I'm not sure. These two are on 32 count. This one is on 25 count, one over one. Okay, and then <laughs> this guy. This is maybe these little ghosties. This is maybe my favorite thing I have ever cross-stitched. Um, it is not at all what the <laughs> original design looks like um, because I made it into Fallout Boy. Um, so, <laughs> um, there's a whole. Um, I don't think I. I'll have to insert a picture. I I came across a, a random meme one day that said um, it's small ghost Patrick that's all. <laughs> and like my little Funko Pop of Patrick Stump, this is him. He always wears the fedora. So I am after seeing Small Ghost Patrick, I had to stitch Small Ghost Patrick. And then if I was going to stitch Small Ghost Patrick, then I had to make the other one into Pete Wentz with his emo bangs. <clears throat> um, and then on the tombstones, I wrote, thanks for the memories <laughs> um, without the vowels as Fall Out Boy, their song title. The original, it was by like Historic Handworks um, or some someone like that I had never heard of before, but out of one of the Just Cross Stitch Halloween magazines. And I was ar I had already started it because I liked the chart as it was um, when I saw Small Ghost Patrick and then I had to modify everything to make it, <laughs> to make it fall out, boy. Um, and it just makes me laugh. Their little faces, um, if you don't know, Thanks for the memories. The song title has no vowels because Follow Boy was known for having way too long. Their song titles were way too long. Like you, <laughs> you couldn't even. That was one of the you know the trademarks of originally. I don't even want to talk about this. Okay, so that was one, two, three, four, five, six FFOs in my shadow box. So next I have this teeny tiny Majora's Mask. Um, Zelda Majora's Mask. This is stitched one over one on 32 count. This is, I want to say this fabric is Wicked Night by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. And this chart is from Etsy. I will have to insert 
their name here. Um, but yeah, it just happened to fit in this tiny frame. I think this frame is actually from the Dollar Tree. And um, I literally, it has these little tabs that you just push down. That's literally all I did. I This is washi tape. So I washi taped, <laughs> stuck it in, done. Also, could be undone and done more permanently if in, if I ever feel like doing that, which I don't foresee. Um, next, I have this very old finish. Um, honestly, I don't even remember stitching this. I know that I did. Um, it was from some sort of kit. It's an Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. Or always, always at your back. Um... So this is on Ada. I, I assume it was kit stuff. I don't know what kit. Sorry, I don't know anything about this. Um, it comes up in my Facebook memory sometimes. And I, I don't remember stitching this. Um, this frame is from a thrift shop. It is supposed to have this oval. I mean, it's literally like the cardboard is still in there. It's um, <laughs> it's very janky. Um, but whatever, it's in a frame and it works, I think, with this piece. Okay, I looked it up. Majora's Mask was by Crafty Gamer UK on Etsy. And this next one I'm going to show you is also from Etsy. The shop is called Lumi Lua Shop. Uh, this is called Raven Queen. And this is what mine looks like. Um, these are entirely uncalled for colors. Um saying I'm a lot. I converted everything to be sort of cool tones. I don't remember what this fabric is. I think it's a picture of this plus, but it's sort of clouds, light blue. Um, her sword has, I think, four different colors of petite treasure braid in it because I'm extra. So does the crown. Um, those flowers are blend also. <laughs> I couldn't find a purple that matched perfectly with that 991, um, which is a green I really like. So it's tweeted. I don't remember which two purples, but she is glorious. I don't know if she will permanently live in this frame. Um, I kind of like the idea of her being in more of an oval frame, and she is obviously a standard size. I don't know if this is a 5 by 7 frame or what, but... Um, yeah, same deal. This is a thrifted frame. It has those little, um, rotating tabs in the back and it's just squished in there. Um, tacked down with some washi tape and one pin down in here where there was too much fabric. So, <laughs> um, looks terrible from the back, but if you're coming to my house, A, don't come in my house. There's a pandemic. B, if you're going to pick up my cross stitch and look at the back and then judge me for it, like, get out of here. Get out of here. Then I finished this. Um, I have had this in my finished box for at least 10 years, I think. This is Black Walk, Black Walk, Black Work Owl. Um, I will have to link for put in who this is by I don't know again I think this is a Dollar Tree frame again like I'm not totally thrilled with it but it's <laughs> this one it's literally these little press tabs and it's just stuck in there there's no glass in any of these except for the shadow box um and they're and I get to look at them every day now I have a lot of frames now, though, that I don't know what to do with. <laughs> I don't know that I love my mantle being all this, this, but for now, this is what it is. And then, oh, the last one I will show you. Um, if you missed it a couple of videos ago, this this is not a new FFO. I did not stitch this. This was stitched by my friend Rob Zav Stitches um, from a Blackwork Needle Society, I believe. Blackwork. Black Needle Society chart um one over one teeny tiny pin cushion okay so this i found this frame this frame is the only one that's not thrifted this is the only one with glass in it um 
and it has glass in it because the glass is like glued into the frame and I didn't want to try to break it out. I didn't want there to be glass shards left. I didn't want glue residue getting on my fabric. So for now it still has glass in it. Um, I did buy this frame on Amazon. It's hefty. It's not the, it's not plastic. So this chart, sorry, is by the Witchy Stitcher. Um, the chart is Witches You Could Not Burn. Um, it is charted as we are the granddaughters of the Witches You Could Not Burn, which is how I stitched it. Um, this is just over a holiday. I'm not sure which one anymore, a pagan holiday. Um, it is charted as just monochrome. I, I think this was my first Gloriana that I used. So this is in, the purple is, it is purple. Um, it's a Gloriana aubergine. And then the green is a combination of a sulky blendable and a gentle art pine. Gentle art pine and a sulky. Um, anyway, I stitched this entirely as we are the granddaughters of the witches you could not burn. And I finished it and I just had this feeling of like, but I don't like it. Like, yes, I finished this, but I don't, I don't love it. Right. Um, and then I realized it was because it was so gendered. And so I just ripped out daughters and made it children, <laughs> made it children, um, which happened to fit, fit. So I didn't have to rip out grand, which was great. But, um, this is stitched on, it's not hand dyed or anything. It's just like a pewter sil silver. I don't know if it's a witch altar as Weigart, but just a standard. And then this one is similarly, um, there are little tabs, the rotating tabs, um, but these are held in with just pins, like clothing, dressmaker pins. So, um, yeah, there's that. I'm really happy to have this out actually, because I really like this. I really like this piece. Um, and this frame was so perfect. I mean, I, I ordered it on Amazon specifically to frame it for this, and then I just didn't do it. So now it's done. and it's not done perfectly. Um, and if I ever feel like trying to make it better, I can because it's not permanently in there. So those are my 11 fully finished objects. I think we need a break. <laughs> I have one finish to show you as well. This is the Modern Folk Embroidery Pride Stitch Along for 2022, Move Forward in Love. Mine is stitched <laughs> over one on 25 count black Lugana, one over one. I did change a couple of the colors, um, but no like deviation from the spirit of this one. Um, I really wish I could get <laughs> the white to not blow out, but um, here it is. It's teeny tiny. Um, I love it. Um, what do I need to say about this? So move forward in love is something that I said on my first floss tube video as part of my tarot read, which is, um, pulling from Madam Adam, who was a tarot reader on TikTok and Instagram, who always says, um, this card is about choice, move forward with love or backward with fear, with fear. Jacob from modern folk embroidery, watched that and was inspired to create this chart. This stitch along is still going on. Jacob has said that he will um, donate 50% of all of the proceeds through at least the end of July um, to charities in the U.S. that benefit LGBTQ plus youths. So that's amazing. It's not too late. I mean, depending on when you're watching this video, <laughs> it's currently July 15th, 2022. Um, so there's still time to buy this chart if you wanted to help a good cause. Um, I did make some changes. Um, so I stitched this corner, this top left, <laughs> this top left corner I stitched mostly as charted. So the birds are um, facing, they're sort of, in my mind, I see this as them being like back to back. 
um, I understand that they are charted to be looking toward each other, like across the top and across the sides. Um, but for me, I wanted to rotate them to look toward each other. So they're moving forward, like toward love with each other, I guess. Um, way overthinking that. But <laughs> I kept this corner as charted just to honor um, the original chart because Jacob is a genius. Um, I did have to backstitch around the black bird, which looks better in person, I promise. I also did all the all of the blacks in black etoile thread. So yes, I stitched both the birds and the chevron and actually all of the outline of this octagon <laughs> where it started to be filled in with white. I filled it in with black etoile on 25 count over one. Um, but honestly, in person, it's worth it because that part um, really stands out, even though it's black on black. So um, so that was one change, rotating the birds, outlining the black birds. Um, and then I, of course, I had to add hats. So, oh my gosh. So this one has a little witch hat. In this corner, they are yellow and purple to go with the white and together with black and white. That is the non-binary pride flag colors. So um, I wanted that incorporated. So they also, I tried to make these birds look like they were taking a step forward and that turned into like boots and heels somehow, which is fitting. Like <laughs> we do like our accessories. Um, and then I did add one other hat. This guy has a top hat. No rhyme or reason to like why I picked that one. I just, they shouldn't all have hats. From my Fruit of Plenty stitch along, I added hats to two of the birds, a top hat and a witch hat. And so that's sort of what I'm, I'm nodding to my own prior modifications of modern folk embroidery here with the top hat and the witch hat. Um, in order to make the hats look fit right, I also did have to change the shape of the birds a little bit. Um, because as charted, these ones are as charted, they only have one stitch for the top of their head and it's just harder to make a hat, you know, <laughs> work right. So this is my finish. Move forward in love. Happy with that. Um, it's probably a standard frame size. I could probably <laughs> throw it in a frame like this. Um, but will I? We'll see. Oh, I did make one other change. <laughs> Sorry. One other change. The border. Um, I used a Threadworks. This is um, Bradley's Balloons, um, which I I didn't fussy. I fussy cut a tiny bit to make the end match because my ends matched up. I started in this corner and I worked this way and I worked down. Um, and then when I ran out of that the six strands in that, then I just kept going. So around this edge and down and around this corner. And so my two ends met up in the center here. And so it wasn't even really fussy cutting as much as just paying attention to where the end happened. So it's not quite in the middle of the bottom border if you're gonna get really picky with me, but I'm super happy. I'm super happy with that border. I don't know how it just perfectly matched my colors. I didn't really plan it that way, but really happy with that. So that's finished. I thought I was going to have more finishes for you because I have so many things that are close and I really want to finish them, but they're not quite there yet. Oh my God. The other one, it wasn't wrinkled before, but I've been sitting on it this whole time somehow. <laughs> Also, none of you commented on my prior video when I pointed out that I am using a Scrabble board for my <laughs> poster board. Not one person said anything about that. <laughs> I guess I just want to say that um, I'm I, I, Q and A is good. I I would I would welcome Q and A for future videos. If you have questions for me, please ask them. <laughs> I promise I'm not scary. Um. Unlike this, which <laughs> I'm so sad I wrinkled him so badly by sitting on him just now. Okay, so this is um, I Have Asked You Thrice by Sassy Stitch on Etsy. Sassy Stitch Boutique on Etsy. Um, 
if you don't recognize, this is the wonderful Dan Levy as his character in Schitt's Creek. I stitched his face first, and then I regretted that because <laughs> as I was stitching the words, these eyes were just staring up at me, like so judgy as I was stitching these words. <laughs> um, so that was intense. And then I got to this point, um, and my headphones were like, no, you're too messy. Stop talking. What was I was going to, I think I have this. Yeah. Okay. So this is how it is charted. I have asked you thrice now for a towel. So my plan is to just stitch. I have asked you thrice and leave off the rest. Um, so I'm just going to center the word thrice. But when I got to, let's get rid of that. When I got to this point, it's so like unresolved melody. Like it, <laughs> I haven't picked this back up because I kind of love it. I kind of love how uncomfortable it is to just have it. Like I have asked you thrice, like, <laughs> please finish your sentence. Um, I don't know. I mean, I like art that makes you feel and like that makes me feel. So part of me is like, what if I just, fin what if I just hung it up like this? How much would that bother you? <laughs> uh, I won't. I will stitch the word thrice. Um, I have a, a gray variegated thread works that I want to use. Um, I, I really thought I was going to use like a bright pink when I, that was my plan all along. And then, um, I don't know, I pulled this Threadworks out of stash. And then um, one of my friends real pointed out that, you know, David wears monochrome black and white sweaters. That's like his thing. So maybe the, maybe the gray. Next, I got out my Teresa Wensler and I was so, it felt so good to get this back out again. That's not what I wanted to show you. Okay, so I thought I had a better picture, but this is what I have, so we'll go with this. Um, this is, these colors are skewed pretty red um, compared to the cover model and what I have, but this is my Teresa Wensler. This is Fantasy Triptych. I started with the castle because I have changes planned for other things. Yes, I am changing a Teresa Wensler. Yes, it's ambitious, and no, I'm not certain about it. <laughs> um... But it felt so good to get this out. So this is where I am. Um, <laughs> so this is stitch two over two on 32 count Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers fabric. This is Once in a Blue Moon. Um, I love this blue. It's so vibrant without being really neon or bright. Um, and so my plan is to make the, the arches more of a gray stone tending toward black instead of that bronzy gold um, and then some some plants with the people but for now I think the last time I worked on this I got to maybe like this center part um, so I turned this corner filled in all of this I got all the way to this the other side of the top part of this castle which I want to say the top half of this castle but the top is not half of this castle. So <laughs> trying to um, moderate my expectations here because I have prior experience with Teresa Wensler. Um, I stitched the castle back in the day on Ada. So maybe we'll talk about that someday, but for today, <laughs> I don't want to get into that trauma. So anyway, um, yeah, this, this is so much work. I mean, you can see just from like the parked threads that I have here, like <laughs> there's so many colors in this. I think I've used maybe close to 40 colors at this point. <laughs> um, but it's super worth it. My plan is to start adding some of the backstitch on um, on the towers and the things that are completed. 
after I finish the top part of the castle. Um, because I think as I'm working on the, the castle wall, I will want to break up, I want to break up that, I mean, in, in both directions. So stitching a lot of the same, um, you know, boring stuff and backstitching a lot, like neither one is fun to do in excess. So I try to balance um, maybe every two lengths or something, I'll throw on a backstitch thread and it just keeps me interested. So that's Fantasy Triptych. I'm really, really excited to be working on that again. I don't know when I'm going to put it down because right now I'm just loving it. Okay, and then the last thing I have to show you is my Heaven and Earth design, which I am going to take out of the Q-snap just for you. Are you honored? Can you feel it? It needed to be adjusted anyway. <laughs> um, so my Heaven and Earth design is not that. Is this the wheel of the year original artwork by Bridget Ashwood so this has um, the different um, pagan holidays the wheel of the year and I guess I hadn't really said before but I'm hoping that I will be able to work on each motif for that holiday like during the season that it is um, so because this will take me two or three years, I'll have a couple passes to get to them. So like during, um, you know, December working on Yule, um, but either, either, maybe I'll do the words first. Maybe I'll do the words out of season. We'll see. I have years to figure it out. <laughs> um, but where am I? All right. This, this is, this is where I am. So, um, yeah, I've got these two top points in. I think that my plan is to work down them both and into the center. And then I can do all of the other spokes out from the center, just so that I don't run into a problem of things not lining up, which would be devastating in a heaven and earth design. <laughs> Um, I guess I didn't say I am removing the background from that and I am not stitching it on, not stitching it on a beige. What are we doing? <laughs> That's much easier. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm stitching on a gray fabric instead of that sand color. So removing the background, currently I'm doing that manually. Um, I will, you know, go back and re assess um, some, some of the edges because I'm a perfectionist, but um, I also think I am going to buy the, you know, background chart from Heaven and Earth Design just to have, um, you know, a second opinion, if you will, um, whenever Haid has their next sale. So that's the plan on that. Um, oh, and I guess one other thing on that. When I, when I had it off the Q-snaps last, I did... The struggle, y'all. The struggle. We're messy. Um, when I had it off the cue snaps, snaps last time, I had, you know, my normal, like, I've mathed this to hell and back. I've mathed this, like, 16 times. I've counted it a million times. And yet, I still really, really need to be reassured that this is going to fit on this fabric. And so I counted all the way down to the bottom and discovered, yes, I have five and a half inches from where I will stop stitching to the edge of the fabric. And at the top, I have four and a half inches. So we are good. I just love how subtle the fading is on this, the way that it fades to like that green and yellow. I didn't even notice that it was yellow while I was stitching it. Wild. Um. I love my full coverage. It's part of my morning routine. Usually I do try to log at least 100 stitches in this every day. I know that doesn't sound like very much, but, um, you know, 100 stitches a day on a haid makes progress slowly. And sometimes I feel like doing more, but um, that also gives me afternoons, evenings to stitch on other things. So that's how I managed to stitch on like three things every day. That's also part of why my progress is 
maybe slow. Um, but anyway, I hadn't been planning on making this video, so it wasn't planned at all. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I need to pull another tarot card to leave you with. I'm not sure why, but I'm not going to second guess that. So maybe if that, if that eight of wands flying passion didn't, <laughs> didn't resonate. Maybe this one's advice. This one's advice on the next, whatever, week or so. We're coming off of that full moon. That was heavy, y'all. That full moon. Okay, so this card is the one that gets a bad rap in like all the movies. The woo tarot reader will pull the death card and be like, death. Ooh. And it's an omen. And that is not what the card means. <laughs> this card does not mean literal death. This card means change <laughs> and how you handle change. So I pulled it in reverse, which means that you are the change. So, and what's coming up for me is that you need to be the change. So this is the advice, sure enough, this is the advice that I'm leaving you with. Be the change that you want to see. The stuff that you're complaining about, the stuff that you want changed, it starts with you. Practice using people's pronouns. If you think, if you're thinking about me, which I'm sure you all think about me often. If you think about me and you use she pronouns for me, correct yourself out loud. Say, or like, re-say the sentence you were thinking using they, them pronouns because that practice is how you learn. Um, repetition, practice, saying it out loud. <laughs> yeah, I guess... Um, If you want something changed, start changing. That's all. That's it. Thanks for watching. I love you. <laughs> Go forth. Change. I don't know. How do I end on that? <laughs> like, how do I end after that? Like... I don't know. Go hug a cat. Bye. <laughs>